perhaps you're familiar with the quote from Sir Arthur Eddington uh, that is somewhat as follows, uh, something unknown is doing something we don't know what, Arthur Eddington, something unknown is doing something we don't know what. <clears throat> this is an expression of humility that uh, acknowledges that despite our scientific advancements, there will always be aspects of the universe that remain beyond our comprehension. Arthur Eddington is pointing to the mysterious nature of reality. Eddington explored aspects of physics like quantum mechanics and relativity, which opened the doors to a reality stranger than previously imagined. Um, Arthur Eddington's quote also suggests the existence of something beyond our current understanding. And, uh, and uh, also, um, in a way, uh, point to the reflection of the subjective nature of experience. All experience is subjective, ultimately. And uh, this interpretation of uh, Arthur Eddington's quote points to the fact that our understanding of the universe is filtered through our own limited senses and cognitive abilities. The something unknown could be referring to the true nature of reality, which might be fundamentally different from how we perceive it. So let's unpack this a little more. Okay, just like uh, photons are the basic units of visual experience and phonons are the basic unit of uh, auditory experience, all our five senses sense quanta, quanta, the smallest units of energy and information, <clears throat> which are invisible. That which is perceiving, that which is perceiving consciousness is also invisible. And the act of perceiving through attention and intention is also invisible. So the observer is invisible, the mode of observation how that happens is invisible and that which is observed is invisible. How then do we experience a physical body and a physical universe? So the mystery is even deeper than I suggested when I was interpreting um, Sir Arthur Reddington's quote. <clears throat> we have always as humans sought explanations. So, you know, in the beginning, the explanation was uh, God created the universe. And then if we tried to imagine God, at least in most uh, Western uh, religions, it was some kind of dead white male in the sky, or at least in, in, in the West, even though the monotheistic religions originally said uh, that God has no form, the God has no form. But as you know, as people started to interpret God, they created images of God, idols of God, as did the Eastern uh, religions too. In fact, they created many deities and many, many gods and goddesses as well. I've always felt that uh, gods and goddesses as visualized, as imagined, are symbolic representations of the infinite, which is impossible to imagine or even comprehend. <clears throat> so in a sense, the religions were all right, that there is an entity that seems to be organizing and uh, and expressing itself as what we call the visible universe with entities such as sentient beings who also experience, which are visible, which also experience a visible universe. But that all is the expression of a fundamental reality, which is uh, incomprehensible and 
actually unimaginable, even though without it, there is no comprehension or imagination. So that kind of uh, religious uh, understanding seemed to be actually more satisfying. Then we had the scientific revolution about 500 years ago with uh, Galileo and then all the great scientists of the Enlightenment, the European Enlightenment as it is referred to. And uh, this gave another picture of the universe, which we now call the Newtonian worldview. The laws of physics, the laws of matter, the laws of motion, the laws of thermodynamics. And now we had a so-called explanation for the universe, even though we had no explanation of how we experience the universe. And then came quantum mechanics and relativity, which uh, actually was so counterintuitive, uh, but worked to, for creating technology, and yet uh, were counterintuitive. That particles are clouds of possibility, there's a phenomenon called tunneling, there's non-local correlation, there's superposition, and that uh, particles have a dual nature, which are waves and particles. So this worldview kind of uh, also uh, dislodged the Newtonian worldview because it seems to be mathematically more accurate. However, none of these worldviews explains existence, nor does any of these worldviews explain awareness of existence. So existence fundamentally is invisible and awareness also is invisible. And yet we experience this, how? The greatest mystery of existence is not existence, but the fact that we are aware of existence and we have no explanation for it. So once again, I come to my favorite quote uh, from Rumi, uh, which is exchange your cleverness for bewilderment. And then I ask myself, how does the brain, a physical object made of invisible forces, explain bewilderment or wonder or curiosity? A material object, a three pound piece of meat, literally, as it's been called, and you rub it and it conjures up the universe and also arguments about the nature of the universe. That's our physicalist worldview, which obviously is, uh, is, uh, can't be, can't be uh, reality. So worldviews clash and recycle and evolve over time, but they all evolve in the mysterious unknown, consciousness. And even though right now, if you go on the internet or you check AI and you ask about consciousness, it remains a mystery. When in fact, without consciousness, I cannot speak, I cannot express myself, nor can you hear me or experience what I'm saying or even comprehend what I'm saying. So if we were to come up with a definition of consciousness, I would say consciousness conceives, constructs, governs, and becomes everything that we call reality, the perceiver, the mode of perception, and that which is perceived. Rupert Spira has a very good definition of consciousness. He says, it is that in which experience occurs, it is that in which experience uh, is known, and it is that out of which experience is made. Fundamentally, consciousness is that which knows experience. But then there's a deeper question. Uh, what is it that knows knowing? What is it that knows knowing? And how do I know what I know? And how do I know what I know is even reliable? So bewilderment is a holy experience and surrender to divinity is a holy experience because 
there is no explanation for existence or awareness of existence. We can come up with theories, but even those theories are in consciousness. So, my friends, um, I suggest that we continue our, our uh, adventure of trying to solve the mystery. But as we continue that adventure, we should also ask ourselves, who is the we that is trying to solve this mystery? Because the we that is trying to solve the mystery is the mystery. That which knows knowing is the mystery. Let me know your thoughts.